What's up everybody, it's your boy Abe. I'm back with another video. Today I'll be showing you two great examples to improve your soccer conditioning levels to put you ahead of your opponents. I will also give you an in-depth look on why you need both of these and when you will want to use this depending on the time of season. This will be very important to maximize your potential and minimize fatigue. If you are only interested in drills and don't care for the education portion, skip to the minute on the screen. As for everybody else, let's dive right into it. Fitness levels is the foundation to how long a player can perform on the field. Without good fitness, a great player becomes mediocre as the game goes on. Hence, it's important to know what types of fitness with the ball or without the ball is more effective depending on the time of season such as in-season, pre-season, or the off-season. The average player covers about 8 miles or about 13 kilometers in a 90-minute competitive match. Covering that distance for any player requires really good endurance. Last thing you want to do in a game is continuously pause to catch your breath every 5 minutes. Don't be that player or say hello to your new best friend for the remainder of the game. The two types of endurance a player needs includes aerobic endurance, also known as cardiovascular endurance, for example a light jog which will utilize oxygen. The next one is anaerobic endurance, also known as speed and power endurance, for example a 6 to 10 second sprint which will require a fast rate of ATP and no oxygen. Now why is aerobic endurance important for a match? Think of it this way. 90 to 95 percent of running involves walking and jogging at slow to moderate levels and aerobic endurance helps you sustain these levels at a higher level and even though a player may only sprint for a total of five minutes in a game that still equates to 40 or 50 all-out bursts your sprints become slower as the match progresses and aerobic endurance actually helps you perform these sprints continuously at a high level throughout the match and last why is anaerobic endurance important after back-to-back all-out sprints, your body fatigues and slows down very quickly. This can be very tiring and high anaerobic endurance helps maintain bursts of power longer and speeds up recovery. And finally, here are the drills to help improve your match fitness. The drill is called the hop circuit. Here is a diagram of what the layout will look like. Complete the circuit as quickly as possible, keeping close possession of the ball. If you mess up, don't stop and keep going. Keep in mind, you still want to be sharp with your movement, so if you are going crazy eight, your touch may suffer. Complete the circuit five times back to back, rest for two minutes and repeat for two to three sets. Remember the drill is to improve the delivery use of oxygen to maintain a higher rate of work during the 90 minutes of a match. I'd like to mention I had to scale down the circuit to the limited room I had. The important thing here is that you are performing this circuit with a variety of ball movements which makes it very specific to the game. As far as when to do this drill, this is better used during the off season about three to five times a week or early preseason for about one to two times a week. Remember, aerobic conditioning is not just limited to this. Even a 20 to 30 minute jog will suffice, but why not do something more specific like with the ball? Next, we have anaerobic endurance conditioning. The drill I will use involves shuttle runs, simple yet very effective. Place five cones 10 yards apart, starting on cone one, run to cone two and back, then cone three and back, and so on. The sprint should be flat out with emphasis on sharp turns. Rest for 30 seconds and repeat. Rest another 30 seconds and repeat for a third time. This is one set. Rest for two minutes with active recovery such as walking and complete for a total of three to five sets. This is better used during the late preseason one or two times a week and in season once a week just to maintain conditioning. Note players that are not getting much playing time may need to perform this two times a week during season. The chart below shows you how to incorporate different types of endurance training into the 12 month plan. It assumes the competitive season starts in September and ends in April so you may need to adjust according to your competitive year. What is more important is how the training changes in relation to what point of the season you are in. Keep in mind that you need to orient this around your practice schedule. Be smart and do not overtrain. Instead, plan accordingly. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like always, leave a like, drop a comment, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, ask away. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. More videos coming soon. See you on the next one.